All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at operators. This is a lesson all about symbols and the magic of symbols and what they can do for you. We need to go ahead and introduce this right now because as Joel starts typing some of his funky, complex-looking code, he's going to be using symbols like crazy, or shall I say, operators like mm. crazy. Mm. Now, you've already seen a basic operator, actually a couple operators at that, but let's say the most basic of the ones you've seen so far is the equals, the right. assignment operator, which is a single equals. And there is a difference between a single equals and a double equals. Trust me on that. Yes, there is. So with that, let me go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Joel. All right. So first thing, let's go ahead and create another temporary variable. Actually, the first that we've created so far, but um, we can say temp int, and let's initialize it to, say, 5. Okay. I say five's a great number. Looks like it. It sure is. So let's jump to the next line. Let's create a second temporary Ooh, value. Ooh, you're living on the edge. And we'll just call it temporary integer two. Okay. It's kind of ugly, but it'll work. How about <laughs> temp int A and temp int B? Okay, just to make you happy. I'm now happy. All right, Buzz is happy. And now what we can do with this is actually run... Anything, any kind of expressions or operators we want on these variables. Okay. So let's say, let's create a final. So final combination. Okay? Okay. So I know an interesting name, final comb. Yeah, total would have been good, but... Okay, fine. <laughs> picky, picky. So now what we can do is... Uh, let's but that's the beauty of variables. You can name them whatever you want. Whatever you want. As long as you, you adhere want. to the couple of guidelines that are in place. Exactly. So now we have three variables, a temp int A, which is equal to 5, a temp int B, equal to 4, and a total equal to 0. And he's been using operators. <laughs> yes, I have. I've been using an operator, the assignment operator. Which is take whatever's on the right and put it into whatever's on the left. Right. Okay. So let's actually go ahead and type total on the left and use our assignment operator, which is just Buzz just said, the what's going to be put in our destination, if you will, is our total, which is on the left. That's right. And what we're going to put into our destination is on our right. That's right. So let's go ahead and type temp int a. And now we can use any kind of addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, anything we want right now. I'll just go ahead and use an addition. Okay. And we can which say... Which is an operator. It is an operator. And we can say temp int a plus temp int b. And terminate. There we go. So, so as I steal the mouse, basically all we're doing is we're saying take whatever is being stored in this variable, this memory location, which in, that, in this particular case, remember, it's storing the value 5, and add to that whatever is being stored in this memory location, which is the value 4. And if you take these two guys and you add them together, you do end up with the incredible number 9. nine. And 9 is what is being stored in total. Remember, we did initialize it with a 0. That 0 is being replaced by nine. We're not combining it or whatever. We're just putting nine in there, period. Right. So now, let's go ahead and print this out so that you can see that we indeed do have something working here. Just in case Buzz was making all that up. Hey, it's possible. So we can say temp int a plus temp int b equals, so this is just in our quotations. This has nothing to do with reality. Meaning that'll print out for real. Right. And we can go ahead and say total with an end line. Sounds so it's to going to print out total temp a plus 10b equals total. And if we press control F5, yes, we do want to build, you'll get 10 bin A plus 10 bin B equals the magic number 9. Hooray! So with that, it's kind of but now to make this make our C out and make a little bit more sense as opposed to saying uh, tempent A plus tempent B. How about we replace tempent A with what's really being stored in that variable and then print out the plus right. as a string value? You can even do that. So that would mean we could put in here temp outside of quotation or about, marks. Or how about just do something like this? We just simply take that out there, and then we come put in... There we go. Look at that. Drives Joel crazy when I steal the keyboard like that. <laughs> I'm not a good student. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so we have C out here, and we say temp in A. So this is a variable. It's actually going to take the value that 5 is and it. replace it right. and print that out. And then we're going to add, which is in quotation marks, and then we're going to print out B. And now we're going to also need another output here that's going to say equals. So and like he's that. just putting the spaces in there. You'll notice over here with our plus and with this, just so that the numbers and the symbols aren't butted all up together. Right. That's all. So let's go ahead and press Control f 5 Yes, I want to build. And you'll notice 5 plus 4 equals 9. Isn't that nice? It's beautiful. Okay. So we can press any key to continue. And let's try something else. We can also go in here and say total. And we can say equals. And we can go ahead and say temp, temp, 
int a minus temp int b. So using another operator, the minus. And the cool thing about this example, actually I say tink, tink, keep those two in, because what's going to happen, this is really going to drive home the point that I had a second ago, and that is we've already got a number being stored in here, but by coming down here and doing an another assignment operation like this right here, this number that was currently being stored in here is about to be replaced Completely with a whole replaced. different number, not combined with or anything replaced, that's all. And another thing to point out that wasn't really mentioned a second ago is we know that there's an assignment operation of whatever's on the right goes into whatever's on the left because of the assignment operator, but here's something else to keep in mind. The expression on the right-hand side needs to be finished first. So we've got this subtraction over here taking place, or we've got the addition that's taking place. All of this is evaluated to a final number first and then dumped over into the other side. Right. Okay. So if we look at here, we have our, let's just, for safety's sake, let's ch change this into minus. Actually, not for safety's sake, just because it looks just better. Just because it looks proper. <laughs> so we can press Control F5, and if we run this, you'll notice 5 minus 4 equals 1. Hey, that's amazing. Yes, it is. Our so, computer is smart. Yes, it is. It's kind of <laughs> scary. Yeah. So we can press any key and kind of drive this home even a little bit better. Let's go ahead and set a breakpoint and press F5. And now we're inside of debugging mode, so we can debug our code. And you'll notice temp and B equals 4, temp and A equals 5. And now we're at this line where we're going to assign total with the addition of temp A plus temp B. And you'll notice down below the total currently is, is zero. 0. That's right. So if we press F10 to execute this line here, so we press F10, now it's actually run it. And you'll Take note notice where your yellow arrow is. And the yellow arrow is here, so that means we're now on this line. We haven't executed it yet. That's right. Our name is total, and look, it's changed to 9. Actually, let's click away so you can see it better. Our value is now 9. And it just changed colors, too. Yes, it did. So if we press F10 again to run this next line, which is going to take A minus B, run <laughs> that, and look at that. Total equals it. 1. Amazing. So very, very cool. So let's stop debugging here for a sec, and let's go into here and show you some other stuff. Why don't we go ahead? There's also divide and multiply which is kind of interesting. Okay. However, you will ha see a small problem here. What is 5 divided by 4? 5 divided by hmm. 4, so that's going to be 1 point something that's being one stored point. in total, which right. happens to be an, an integer, integer composed of only 4 bytes. And, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to reality. Okay. <laughs> which yeah. will only well, which will so give us a 1. We're going to be truncating stuff. We'll be truncating, which is a bad thing. Yes. So what we need to do is go ahead and go in here and change these to floats. Okay, so now we're going to have a greater deal of accuracy. That's right. So if we let's let's go ahead and comment this one out just okay. for now, and let's press Control F5. Yes, we want to build. And since he left the minus in there, it's going to look like five minus four equals one point two five. Good point. But it's all so let's good. Let's go though. into here, change this to divide to make Buzz happy. Just and to make sense. Yes, and look, we do have five divided by four equals one point two five. Hey, look at that. So now everything is good. Now we actually have our decimal point values on the right, yes, which is nice. Absolutely. So if we delete this, actually comment this one out, and now we do a multiply. And let's go down to our C out here and change this divide to a multiply just so it makes sense. Press Control F5. Yes, we do want to build. And you'll see 5 times 4 equals 20. Of course, in this case, we could have just left this as an integer, couldn't mm -hmm. we? Have? That's right. But it's just just what I happen to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if we did go in here and change this to 5.5 or 5.4 and change the temp B to 4.3, and we ran this, you'll notice that we took 5.4 and multiplied it by 4.3, and we do get a nice round number. That's right. A, n a nice correct number, actually. So let's press any key to continue. Now, aside from these very simple operators, we do have a lot of other operators as well. Some cool ones. Oh, sorry. Yes, we do. So, for instance, we could go in here, and we can say, let's let's go back and change this to, say, 8, and let's change this to 2. So, let's go into here, and let's leave that at leave that. Minute, here, I know where you're going with this. And let's print in. <gasps> A modulus. Yes, oh, we did. Oh, no. So, we're checking for... All the right, remainder right. of That's right. temp A divided by temp B. That's right. So, if we run this... You might notice we have a little problem. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? The reason is is because the left operand has type float. When we're dealing with modulus, you can only find the remainder with our modulus operator if they're integers. So we can go in here and change this to an int. Let's change all of them to int. 
And if we run this again, Control F7, you'll notice that it compiles perfectly fine. That's pretty special, Joe. Yes, it is. So if we press Control F5, and yes, we want to build it, you'll notice that 8 modulus 2 equals 0. zero because because 8 is divisible, is divisible by, by 2. two. Right. right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm saying what I'm saying. So <laughs> that's pretty scary. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so let's go in here. We also have, say, and or well, et real quick, back to the modulus thing. People may be wondering why would you want to do something like that. It's a it's a great way if you want to like do every other something right. or if we go use a loop or something and loop through every other um, index in an array, for instance. All that can be possible with our modulus. Exactly. So what we can do here is let's let's try something else. What if we said temp int a? This is going to be kind of scary. Ooh. Equals equals temp int b. Now, Ooh. what is that? Ooh, that's two equals. That's like an equality type statement. Yes, it is. So what it's checking is it's going to say, is temp e a equals equal to temp int b. So this is not an assignment out there, this ladies and gentlemen. This is not an assignment. This is not going to take whatever is in temp int b and put it into temp int a. No, it is not. Okay. And another thing that you may want to see here is that I put this in parentheses just so it makes sure that it runs whatever is in the parentheses first. Right. So if we run this, w I mean, is temp A equal to temp int B? Right. Is well, it? you know, probably not on planet Earth. No. So well, you got eight and two. Hmm. But now Friday nights they're equal. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. So if we press Control F7, you'll notice that it's perfectly happy with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So let's say temp int A, and we'll change this to equals equals temp int B. Right. And if we press Control F5. You'll notice that temp 8 equals equals 2 equals 0. In other words, They're 8 not. equals 0 is not true. Right. Now make them equal to one another and check out what you get. Yeah. So if we go in here and change the temp int b to 8. Always and we got to pick on the little guy. I know. If we press control F5, yes, we want to build. We go in here, 8 equals equals 8 is it's a true statement. Right. Giving you a value of 1, right. which is true. So if we press any key to continue, we also have a bunch of other operators we can say not equal to. Oh, yeah. So temp int A is not equal to temp int B. Is that a true or false statement? Well, right now, they're equal to one another. So that means they're it's a false statement. That's right. So we should have in our total a value of zero. That's right. So if we press Control F5 and look at this again, you'll notice eight. Oh, well, <laughs> keep forgetting to change this. I wasn't going to say nothing. Sure. I just got to smile at you. I've already reminded you once. How many times do you need? <laughs> so we have eight does not equal eight is that's false. Right. So that's very good. Of course, if we change this, so if this, we said it would be eight true. to two again, they would not be equal, and that is correct. It's a true right. statement. So you'd get a one. Right. So there's all sorts of other operations we can connect with this. For instance, let's say um, we also have. Well, let's go ahead and introduce these as well. Temp in A is greater than temp in B. Mm -hmm. So we can say eight is greater than two. Mm -hmm. Well, is eight greater than two? Last time yes. I checked. Yes. So that would give us a value of one. one. Let's go ahead and copy this so we don't have to do this quite so many times. And let's just comment this out. If I didn't make this clear before, commenting it out, that means that the com it's not going to be run at all. It's right. completely disregarded. Those are just simple notes being left behind for the programmer or for anybody that may come back in later reading the code. And trust me, comments are important because you may, you may work all Friday night on something that's got some cool logic to it and then have to put your code up for a while, come back to it three days later. And if you didn't comment anything and the logic gets nice and deep, you may look at it and go, what? the heck was I doing? Yes, exactly. And then exactly. you end up spending an entire day trying to figure out the logic behind what you were setting up earlier. Right. So comments are really good. And in this case here, Joel's been using them to just quickly simulate removing lines right. without physically removing the line. So what we can do here is say, let's say total temp in A is less than temp in B. Now that is a false statement. Mm -hmm. So let's go in here. Let's put a breakpoint down. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's press F5. And let's link this together. And now we're on this line. If we press F10, you'll notice that hey. temp in A is greater than temp in B because our total that we have here is now equal to 1. That's right. So it's true. So if we run this next line, which says temp in A is less than temp in B, we run that. That is a false statement because our total is now equal to 0. That's correct. Notice our next line of execution, by the way, is not on the comment line right, as well. Right. It skipped right through it. Look where the yellow arrow is. Right here. That's right. So let's stop debugging. Now, there's still a few more things that I just want to kind of demonstrate, <coughs> and that is the ampersands, double ampersands, and, and the, double pipe, the double pipe symbols. Okay. So let's go into here, and let's say, well, another thing. 
We can also go in here. Up till now, we've always been using variables. Right. We can also use constants. Absolutely. We do not have to use variables all the time. So if we delete this line, and let's go in here, and we can say total equals 5, as we did before. And that's going to put 5 into the memory address. Yes, it is. The total is representing. And like we did before, we can say 5 plus 4. That's a perfectly cool statement. That is. It's going to put 9 over there now. Right. If we put, you know, it's going to put 9 in total. Exactly. That's right. So that's going to work. That means we can also do this. 5 is greater than 4. So that means the total should give us a value of, point. of 1, That's which right. is true. Now now we can introduce the ands, or double ampersands, and the double pipes. Okay. If we say and, let's do another per, um, parenthesis, which means we want to run this as fast as possible, basically, mm -hmm. from left to right. We can go in here and say, is 3 greater than 4? Or let's say 3 greater than 2. Let's make it true. So both of these statements are going to be true. Correct? Okay, that's right. So this one is going to be true, and this one's going to be true. So and that's if both are true, since we're using an AND, the final value will be true. Right. This bitwise AND operation is going to return 1. That's right. So if we put this all oh, in parentheses... Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> you use bitwise. You're, like, really getting professional. <laughs> I love it. So we have this whole thing put in parentheses. That means it should run and then give us back the value to total. But before we actually run this, let's do another line. And let's say, let's make this first one false. So is 2 greater than 4? No. No. So this one's going to equal 0, and the one on the right is going to equal 1. And because it's so an and, they right. both have to be true to result in a true coming right. back. So, so this will give us a 0. So this first statement, let's say, now this is a good example of using comments, we're going to say total will now equal 1. Okay. If we go to here, to mm, total will <laughs> now e equal 0. Sounds good. So if we Let's go ahead and it. run this, let's probably push F5. Yes, we want to build. And now we're down here, ten, total equals 0. If we press F10, you'll notice that total is equal to 1 be because both of these are true. That's right. If we run the second one, you'll notice that the first one is false, the second one is true. Therefore, if you add them together, you're going to get a false statement. You got it. So if we stop debugging for just a sec, we also have the OR operation. So if we put in a double pipe here, Mm -hmm. then what's going to happen is it's going to say, if this one is true or, or this one is true, give, us a, give us a true value. So this, the first one here is equal to 0. Second one equals 1. Therefore, it's one true. Of them is one true, of them is true. So we're going to get a true. Right. So let's go ahead and debug this again just to make this clear. And if we press F10, you'll notice that it is equal to 1 as it was before. If we execute the second one, it still equals 1. That's right. Now, these logical operators become very, very important later on as you start to... Well, develop some logic. Exactly. So one final thing uh, before this lesson comes to a close, sad. Uh, we can go in here, and let's actually delete these two lines. You get the idea. And we can say total equals 5, okay? Mm -hmm. Now what we can do is say total plus equals 3. Ooh. Isn't that fancy? He's pulling out the big guns. Yes, I this am. This is for the truly lazy programmer. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> actually, so. he uses stuff like crazy. <laughs> So total, so now total is 5 up to this line. If we get down to this line, total plus equals 3 basically can be replaced with, um, let's just go down here, this can be replaced with total equals total plus, plus three. 3. So these two lines, this one and this one, line 14 and 15, are identical. That's They're doing right. exactly the same thing. That's right. So and, and let me point this out, too, because I've seen some beginners in the past get a little bit confused with this. Even though we're going to be updating what's in total, everything that's on the right is evaluated first. So whatever is currently in total, which is 5, if we just ignore this guy right here. So in other words, going from this line up here, then we'll skip and come down to here. So 5 plus 3, that gives us 8. Then 8 is finally stored over in here. Right. I only say that because I've seen some beginners in the past get confused with, well, I'm updating this, but I'm using what I'm updating here. Ah, uh, right. and it's not a bad thing. So let's go ahead and run this just to make sure, just to prove that it is working indeed. So let's lay down a key. Yes, we want to build. And now let's go into here. Total equals zero. Run this. Total five. now equals five. Run this statement. Eight. Total now equals eight. So Excellent. everything's working really, really good. The same thing applies for multiply, minus, and divide. So we can say minus equals, divide equals, or even multiply equals. You got it. All works fine. Now, oh, and just to make double sure, we can also go in here and type in a variable, say temp int a, and it's fine. Just to it. make sure that you realize that no matter where you can put constants, you can also put a variable. That's right. And one last thing. I said one last thing already, but this is truly the last thing. If we say total equals, we can say 
minus minus temp int a. So what does that mean, Bob? Now he's getting into the good stuff. Right. Well, this is where we're going to take one away from temp int a and put that over into total. Right. So. Well, often, let me say this, often uh, people find themselves in situations where they're having to write a counter or some sort of code that's got a variable that's incrementing by one each time. Right. And as opposed to having to write something like total equals total plus one, which of course you could just say plus equals and one. Right. What they did is they kind of simplified things by just like going total plus plus or right. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So if we go into here, and let's go ahead and run this, because this can be a little bit confusing. This is the pre-increment. That's right. So if we run this, total equals 5. Now, in temp A, you'll notice that we have 8. So if we run this, what it's going to do is first minus temp int A by 1, and then put that into total. So if we look at this, you'll notice that total equals now equals 7, That's which right. is equal to temp int A minus 1. That's right. But you'll also notice that it didn't just change total. It mm -hmm. also changed temp int A. Mm -hmm. So it changed both of those values, but before it assigned it, that's why this is called the pre-increment, before it actually initialized total to that value, it decremented it 1. Right. So the same can be applied for, say, um, addition as you well. You know what? You know, before you go further, rewrite that line so that they could see what that line looks like. In other words, you could say that total equals, and then you'd want to do temp int a. Basically, what we could do is say temp int a minus minus. Yes. And then we could go into here and say total equals temp int a. You could. I'm wanting to get the number one in there somehow so, so they can actually see it there. So we could say temp int a minus one. Right. So that's what they're... The only difference here is that temp int a is not actually changed. Exactly. It's the, that's very important to get across. Right. In this case right here, it's just taking, it's developing a new number that can get stored over here. Right. It's not it's actually not changing altering temp int this. a. By putting that minus minus, that's why a second ago when I was talking about the plus plus as example with talking about doing a counter, I used total to refer to that because total was being changed. What Joel did is he snuck a good one in on you guys. By coming over here and putting the minus minus, mixing that in with temp int a, we are affecting this and affecting this. Right. Okay. So to make this maybe double clear, we could okay. go in here and say total plus plus. That's a good way to always start explaining this one. So if we say total plus plus, what that's going to mean is we have total equals 5. We come down to this line, total plus plus, and that's going to actually increment our total by 1. Right. Which could be rewritten on line 14 here, plus equals 1. Right. Or, just to give another example, total plus 1. That's All right. the same thing. So just now, he did mention something lightly just a second ago, and that is the pre-increment or the post-increment. Right. Or decrement. Very, very important. Very important. Is there a way you can perhaps mix right, that sure. in with the C-out type stuff? Sure. If we go into here, let's actually delete this, and let's create a new C-out statement. We can leave that commented out. We can say, let's say, temp int a plus plus. So if we say, well, let's make this a little bit easier. Let's put in a little quotation here. Let's say temp int a equals... And then end that, print that out, and say end L. Okay. So what that's going to do is come into here and say temp int A, which now, if you remember up here, is equal to 8. Right. And if we come down in here, it's going to say, well, temp int A plus plus. Right, but the what plus plus in do? this case is a post right. operation, which means it's going to... Post it's actually happen afterwards. That's right. After it takes, after the C out takes place. Right. So if we let's just delete this total equals 5 just to make things a little bit more... Um, clear. If we go into here, press Control F5. Yes, we want to build. Go into here. You'll notice that hmm, temp int a equals Interesting. It eight. looks like it didn't change it at all. It didn't change at all. However, if we go into here and let's print this line again, but without the plus plus, we'll see that it has indeed changed. Right. So if we go into here, press Control F5. Yes, we want to build. Notice that temp int a has indeed changed after this first line. Be it just didn't print out that value. That's right, because, again, this is a post increment. We had the two pluses at the end, and because of that, then this entire line executes without affecting what the contents of temp int a at all. Right. If we were to take these, these uh, two addition symbols over here and put them over here on the left-hand side so that we're doing a pre-increment, then what would happen is it would first increment the contents of this before executing C out, and in this case, we would see that the C out is equal to 9, or or the temp in A is 9, and temp in A well, is still 9. Right. So go ahead so and So we can do actually that. do that. Um, if we go into here and say pre-increment and delete these two out, press Control F5, yes, we want to build, and you'll notice that now nine old equals nine. 9 because it 
pre-incremented. That's right. Exactly. In other words, it executed that before executing the line. Right. So actually, I think with that, that pretty much, pretty much does everything. Pretty much wraps up everything we want to talk about in right. regards to operators. All right. So thanks a lot, everyone.